your hand is moving right now and you are still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus and your voice is calling me out and right now I know you're able and my God will come through again and you lost a battle. You know, that's good news, friends, because I don't know about you, but I find myself in constant battle. Amen. I'm always up against it, if you will. And the good news is, is that as long as the Lord is on my side, isn't that good news? Then I ain't got to worry about it. Amen. How many know the Bible says that if the Lord is for you, who can be against us amen thank god that for over a year now the lord has fought our battles the lord has been good to us the lord has kept us you see i realize friends that i'm not here today because of my own intelligence or skill no i'm 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 still standing i'm still I'm still living, I'm still singing, I'm still preaching, I'm, I, I'm doing all that I'm doing because the Lord has been on my side. Hallelujah. How we thank God for that. There are people, friends, who this time last year were with us and they're going on now. Amen. Over a half a million people, amen, have, have met their makeup as a result of this pandemic but you ought to thank God that you're not one of them. Uh, y'all ought to hear what I'm saying friends don't don't ever take for granted 
what the Lord is doing uh, in your life. You and I are not one of them. We're still in the land of the living. Hallelujah. And I want to just bless his name for that. I, I want the Lord to know that I'm grateful, that I'm appreciative. I'm, I'm not like some Christians who are stuck up spiritually. Amen. You can't get a praise out of their mouth. You can't get a hand raise. You can't get a clap. You can't get nothing from them. But watch this. When they get in trouble, oh, Lord. Friends, you better learn to bless the Lord at all times, not, not just when you're in trouble. Y'all, y'all, in other words, in other words, get so used to it. Amen. That praise don't seem strange. Am I right about it? Hallelujah. Thank God for who he is and for, for all that he is doing today in our lives. There's a word today from the book of Joshua, chapter 24. As we close today this series, Moving forward by faith a preaching series through the book of Joshua and Joshua 24 I want to begin just reading from there today at verse number 14 it's a familiar passage of scripture and I just want to read beginning at verse number 14 in reality, I will make reference to both chapter 23 and chapter 24 because in a real sense, chapter 23 and 24 uh, consist of the two closing messages, the two final addresses of General Joshua to the people of God as he retells the story. Amen. Amen. As he retells the story of their history and, and all that God is and all that God has done for them. But, but, but I know you wouldn't be able to tolerate reading two whole chapters. And, and so I, I, I figured I'd narrow it down a little bit. Amen. And, and begin at a passage that we are all familiar with, beginning at verse 14 in chapter 24. Joshua now is an old man. Amen. Anybody can identify with that? Amen. Amen. I know I can. But he, Joshua's 110 years old as, as he's giving this little talk. Amen. At, at verse 14, at verse 14, y'all got it in your Bibles? Here, here's what it says in my Bible from the English Standard uh, Version. Now, therefore, fear the Lord. And serve him in sincerity and faithfulness. Put away the gods that your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods your fathers served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Then, then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery and who did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way that we went and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, I, I thought this is a strange verse right here. They just committed themselves to serving God. And look at what Joshua said. But Joshua said, you are not able to serve the Lord. For he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you 
after having done you good. My goodness, y'all see that? And the people said to Joshua, no, but we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And, and they said, we are witnesses. He said, then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your heart to the Lord, the God of Israel. And, and the people said to Joshua, the God of our, the Lord of our, the Lord our God will, we will serve and his voice we will obey. And Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and put it, place a statue and rules to them at Shechem. And, and Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God. And, and he took a large stone and set it up there under the terabith that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said to all the people, behold, this stone shall be a witness against us. For it has heard all the words of the Lord that he spoke to us. Therefore, it shall be a witness against you, lest you deal falsely with your God. So Joshua sent the people away, every man to his inheritance. This is a reading of God's word, holy word. From Joshua 24, 14 through 28. Lord, we do thank you for the reading of your word. Holy Spirit, you are our teacher. We submit ourselves now to your divine teaching. Open up our hearts, our spiritual eyes, that we might see wondrous things out of your law. Lord, forgive us. For all of our sins. Save, encourage, convict, whatever you want to do today through the preaching experience. Lord, we say, have thine own way. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. All the people of God said amen. You may take your seats. I want to just talk just for a few minutes here. I want to label this text. Uh, don't forget how you got there. We, we've been looking at the book of, of Joshua. We've discovered that the central message of Joshua is simply this, that God is a God who keeps his promises. Amen. If, if God says it, friends, God's going to do it. In fact, the scripture says over and over in the book of Joshua not one of the promises that God made to his people failed. You've heard me say that if you've been tracking with us for several weeks. We've come back to that many times, Rose. We've said that many times. I hope you haven't missed that because that is the central truth of the book of Joshua. The book of Joshua, though named after him, is not about Joshua. The, the book of Joshua is about God. And it's about this reality, this fact that was good for them and hopefully a blessing and encouragement to you and I that we serve a God who keeps his promises. I hear Paul saying, I am persuaded that that which he have what committed to me, he's also able to what perform. I, I like that, friends. That, that, that's a verse that I haven't quoted a lot, but, but, but the idea of it, the, the philosophy of it has helped me this last year that that God keeps his promises. Some, some of you have made it this last year through this pandemic because you know, despite how dark the day got, no, no, no matter how tough it may have looked, you remembered one thing, and that is God keeps his promises. When you got scared, when you got lonely, when you were frightened, when fear set in, what kept you going, friends? Was you know that my God shall supply. Do I have anybody in here know what I'm talking about? All of our needs according to what? His riches in glory. When it looked like you didn't know how you were going to make it. I wish I had somebody in here know what I'm talking about. 
You, you just remembered that, look here, I can do all things through Christ. Who what? Who gives me the strength. You knew that if you just kept your faith in God, that God would move you from promise to possession. That, that, that's really what Joshua has decided to, to in, his closing, in his closing address to the people, he reminds them. I like this one writer said, and I love it. He said, tell the story again. In other words, let, let's tell the story again. And let's keep telling the story. If you notice in the book of Joshua, every time something significant happened, they set up a memorial. They, they set up a monument. They, they, they did something so that, so that in the days to come, when, when trouble came, they could look and say, I remember when. Anybody in here know what I'm talking about? I remember when. I, I, I don't know what God is going to do about my current situation, but I'm convinced that if he did it once, I wish I had a praying church in here, that if God did it once, my God can do it again. Friends, that's, that's where we've got to be in this day and age. We've got to remember that our God is a God who keeps his promises. When, when, when Joshua opens up in chapter 23, I want you to see this. When it opens up in chapter 23, here are the words of verse 1. As after a long time. When the Lord had given rest to Israel from all of their surrounding enemies, and Joshua was old and advanced well in years, Joshua summoned all the Israelites, the elders, and the heads, the judges, and the officers, and he said, I am old now, well advanced in years, and you have seen all the Lord your God has done to all these nations, for it is the Lord your God who has fought for you. Watch this, friends. Don't, don't forget how you got here. Joshua it wants them to know that, look here, we are now at a place of rest. The inheritance that God promised us we now enjoy the battle is over and we are here let's not get it twisted we are not here in this new land because we were smart we we not here in what possession of this inheritance because we was cool and had it going on we we're not here but because of who we are what connected to what uh, from a parallel standpoint but, it, but we are here and enjoying what we're enjoying because we are connected. But it's not, it, watch this, it's not horizontal, it's vertical. We are here, he says, because the Lord has fought. Anybody know what I'm talking about? A amen. We are here because what? The Lord has fought our battles. He goes on and begins to remind them. He says, you are now. In possession of land that you did not labor for. He said, you are now eating from vineyards and arches, fruit and vegetables that you did not plant. I, I like this, friends. He, he said, I want you to know that all that you have, don't you get full of yourself. Don't you get to thinking that you all of that and a bag of chips. I know you've got a degree. I know you've got a large bank account. I know you are well connected. But you need to understand, friends, if God had not been on your side, your bank account ain't big enough. If God had not been on your side, your working out at the gym can't keep you healthy. If God had not been on your side, your children would not be being blessed like they are. If God had withdrawn himself. I wish I had somebody know what I'm talking about. 
I don't know how you can sit there and look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. I wonder, has the Lord done anything for you? Has he brought you out? Has he kept you? Has he fed you? Has he answered your prayers? Has he made a way out of no way? Has he been a will in the middle of a will? Then you ought to tell somebody. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord. When, when, when you don't respond, it is, to, it is to assume that you think you got here by pulling up your own bootstraps. But Joshua says, don't forget how you get here. Watch this, friends. Because when we forget how we get here, what's clear in the teaching of chapter 23 and chapter 24, it is implied that if you forget, the same God who brought you blessings if you forget and stop doing what you did to get here if you forget and refuse to acknowledge the God who brought you here that same God he says who brought blessings can bring curses watch this and so he tells the story Say, so tell them again. Watch this. There's an emphasis beginning in chapter 24 to remind them that they are not responsible. I notice that there's an emphasis on the word I. Go, go back to the beginning of chapter 24. Are you still tracking with me? He brings them to Shechem and he summons all the people. Watch this. But notice here, when he gets to verse number three, he says, telling them the story of the history. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made him, made his offspring many. I gave him Isaac. And to Isaac, I gave him Jacob. And Esau, and I, y'all, 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 y'all better hear what I'm saying. And and I gave Esau the hill country, amen, of Seir to possess. And Jacob and his children went to Egypt. And I sent Moses and Aaron. And I plagued Egypt with what I did in the midst of it. And afterwards, I brought you out. Friends, you got to be asleep if you miss that. What, what Joshua is trying to get them to see, don't forget how you got here. You haven't done nothing. Everything that you are enjoying is because I did it. Oh, I like that, friends. And watch this. And, and what's clear when you consider God going back to the first step of what? Of, of, of calling Abraham. God called Abraham. God made uh, election of Abraham. God chose Abraham not because of Abraham. Anything Abraham did, God chose him. And that shouts me because I see myself in Abraham. I haven't done anything. Worthy. Watch this. You didn't do anything. Worthy of being chosen. You didn't do anything. Worthy of being selected to be on God's team. God chose you. Well, uh, because God loves you. Mm. Oh, that's rich right there. He says, everything that you are enjoying is because I did it. Look, look at, look at, look at verse number six. Then I brought 
your father's out of Egypt and, and you came across the sea and the Egyptians pursued your fathers. And when they cried to the Lord, the Lord put darkness between you and the Egyptians, made the sea come upon them, covered them, and your eyes saw what I did in Egypt. Look at verse 8. Then I brought you to the land of the Amorites who, who lived on the other side of the Jordan. They, they fought with you and I gave them into your hands. Watch this. Do, do y'all hear that verse? It's not by power nor by might, but by my spirit say the Lord, watch this, Don, when you, when you are victorious in your life, when, when you defeat Satan, don't forget, you didn't defeat him. Y'all yeah, better hear what I'm saying. When, 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 when you experience victory in your life, don't ever think that the victory is because of your own skill and ability. It is the God in you. I hear the Philippian writer saying in this way, for it is God who worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. In other words, if there's no God in you, ain't nothing going to come out good. It is God who is doing it. That, that's why you ought to not uh, 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 stick out your chest. Amen. And, 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 and brag about what you're doing. You watch this, ch children of God. You can't have the mentality of some of these NBA players. After they score a bucket or after they shoot a, a slam dunk, they run down the court. Watch this. Do you see them? And they pop their jerseys. That's to say, look at me. Can I tell you something on a higher and holier level spiritually? You ain't I ain't never got a right to pop. I, I wish I had somebody. I, I brought oh, I vest because God, we ain't done nothing. Don't forget where you came from. Don't forget how you got here. Amen. I don't care where it is. You have come from. I am what I am because of the grace of God. Mm -hmm. I'm looking right now at some blessed people. Amen. Y'all know you're blessed. You won't admit it, but I'm going to testify for you. I I'm looking at some blessed people. Amen. You so blessed that after you got paid and, and after you paid all your bills, you got some extra money. You got some discretionary money. That's, that's why you can buy a little something, something every now and then. Because you're blessed. But, but don't think that's because you got seniority on your job. Don't think that's because you got a degree. Don't think. I wish I had somebody know what I'm talking about. Well, whatever you have, it's because of the grace. The grace of God. He, this, this warning of Joshua, Joshua is on his last few years. And Joshua wants them to recommit to God again. And that's been a theme in Joshua. And he wants them to understand that if you don't do what I'm telling you, trouble awaits you. Can, can I give you the end result? Watch this. Bible students know this, that even though they stepped up and said, we will do what the Lord says, if you know your Bible, they did not keep their word. Which is the reason they were taken into captivity into Babylon and Assyria, because they did not keep their word. Watch this now. You mean after Joshua took what would, what, what, what would be some of his last breath to tell them the story over and over again 
and to emphasize that you have only what gained your inheritance because the Lord fought for you because you have, what, have obeyed the Lord and you need to keep the, and they, you mean after all of that they went back on it yes but don't point your finger at them don't talk about them because they ain't the last people Who said, I will serve the Lord? Come here, Peter. Lord, I'm with you and I'll never deny you. But before the rooster crowed three times, he, look here, friends. That's why later I'm jumping ahead of myself. But watch this. That's all right. I, I'm, I got to be where I'm at. That's why when they confessed that they were going to serve the Lord, Joshua said, you cannot serve the Lord. In a real sense, can I give you the, the translation of that? What he's saying is, you talking loud. But you need to understand, I don't, if you, I don't know if you understand the kind of commitment you're making. You need to understand, God don't want to hear what you say just with your lips. Because he's a holy God. And a holy God deserves and demands holy people because he's a jealous God he will not have you two time in him mm. don't forget where you come from and then watch this I'm rushing now after he lays this all out hopefully now they get it don't forget where you came from Keep doing what you're doing. You gained your inheritance by walking in faith. You are now in possession of your inheritance because you walked by faith. But you don't get to enjoy, watch this, your inheritance unless you continue in obedience. You can get there by faith, but you don't ever really enjoy it unless you continue in obedience. In other words, you got to keep doing what you did to get here. Watch this. Don't forget where you came from. Don't forget how you got here. And then when we get to verse 14, it is clear that Joshua decides that since God has been this good to you, since God has given you cities you did not build, since God has given you food from vineyards that you did not plant, since you now own land that you didn't work for, there ought to be one response. Joshua said in verse 14, watch this, he says, because of that, now therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your father served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Friends, you remember I told you earlier in the verses that we read that there was a what? A repetition of the word I. Beginning at verse 14, there is a repetition some 11 times of the word serve. Watch this, which says this, friends, that once you realize how you got there, once you realize who brought you there, once you understand who's responsible, you ain't got but one obligation, and that is to serve the Lord. Watch this. But he says that service to God must first be sincere. Do y'all get that? With authenticity. And then he says it must be what? Faithful service. Watch this. He says that it cannot be you trying to serve God on one hand 
and somebody else on the other. That's why he follows it with this statement. And put away the gods. Watch this, friends. This, all the, this messed me up when I really thought about what he was saying. The Bible never says anything for no reason. The Bible would not tell them, listen closely. Watch this. Watch, watch this, Joy. He would not tell them to put away the foreign gods if they weren't worshiping foreign gods. Now, that ought to mess some of y'all up. Wait a minute. These are the people of God who've been delivered. But, friends, when you study Joshua, you realize, friends, that what happened, some of them privately, some of them secretly had act like they were all in for God, but kept them a side piece. Mm. Can I confess something? And on my own reason I'm right now confessing it because it helps me make this illustration. I watched a video on social media this week where this comedian has what he calls a side chick. And the side chick was coming to him to say, I'm tired of being a side chick. <laughs> Watch this. I'm watching that thing. I'm going, this is crazy. And he, try, the guy she's trying to pull away from is telling her, what's wrong with you? I treat you right. You live in this house. I bought you this car. La da 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 da. And you know, you, you look here. I, I care about you. Now he got a woman and she's one of his side chicks. He got three side chicks. He said, look here, I treat y'all all the same. Y'all all well, well taken care of. But she kept trying to say, I'm tired of being a side chick. Because as a side chick, yeah, you bought me a house. Yeah, you got me a car, but you never take me out. Y'all know me, I'm always looking for the spiritual story. I think sometimes that's what God is trying to say to you and I. Who, who all of this and all of that, when we're in the church house, that's in private. God is your all in all when you're in church. But you never take God out for a date. You never, I wish I had somebody, you never take God out in public. God ain't nothing but a side chick. I wish I had somebody know what I'm talking about. You love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind when you're in the church house or when you're on the virtual or online stream. Hello, do I have somebody say amen here? But what about being bold enough to let the world know that Jesus is mine. Oh, yes, he is. Friend, what he's saying here, that if you're going to serve God, you've got to put away foreign gods and love the Lord thy God with all of your heart. Watch this, friends. All of your soul and all of your might. But verse 15 brings me to where I really want to be, and that is, he said, you need to do this. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve. Whether the God your father served in the region beyond the river, the God of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. And then he makes a bold statement. But as for me, and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Can, 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 I, can, I, can, I, can I prophesy here real quick? Watch this. Y'all say you ain't no prophet. Yes, I am. Watch this. I'm a modern-day prophet. In fact, I'm a biblical prophet. Because a real prophet only speaks what the Lord says. And what I'm getting ready to tell you is what the Lord says. 
Watch this. He tells them that you got to choose. I, I wrote this down in my notes. When it comes to God, on God's spiritual gearbox, there is no neutral position. Some of y'all say, I don't get that. I, I don't know why you don't get it. You drive a car. And when you get in your car right now, unless you park where you can drive straight out, when you get in your car, when you leave here, you're going to have to what? Hit that gear switch. That's the gearbox. And there are many what places on there. And you got to move that. Watch this. On every one of our gearboxes is a neutral position. But on God's gearbox, there is no neutral position. In God's service, you can't say I'm not making a decision. What Joshua is saying, when it comes to God, all of us got to choose. Who we going to serve? And, and don't get it twisted. He not saying that if they decide to choose those other gods, that that's going to be all right with God. That's not what he's saying. Because he follows, he follows this word conversation with, if you choose that, then there are going to be some curses. The encouragement here is to choose God, you cannot be what caught between two opinions. Here's what this really teaches. Joshua understands something that most of us still don't get. You and I were created to worship something. Every man woman, boy, and girl has been created to worship something. And Joshua is telling them, this shouldn't be a hard sell. In light of all that God has done for you, in light of all that God has done for me, look like to me, we ain't got but one choice. And Joshua said, why y'all still trying to make up your mind? Ask for me. And my house, we will serve the Lord. Here, here, here's my prophetic piece. We are living, friends, in a post-Christian society. And, and, and unless you sleep, the days we are living in are getting darker and darker and darker as it relates to the things of God. I told you last week. Well, I don't know if I told y'all, but I told my Zoom people. In Congress... Just a week ago, a senator stood up in Congress, on the floor of Congress, when another senator was from Florida was quoting the Bible as it relates to this Equality Act they're trying to pass. He was quoting the Bible and says that a nation, he was even quoting Tony Evans' a, 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 a Christian Standard Bible. That a nation that disrespects God cannot what expect to be blessed of God. And this senator jumped up and said, this is, no, this is not a place where we consider what God thinks. Hmm. In the house where they make laws that will govern and policy that will decide things about you and me. He, he's saying that we don't care what God thinks about it. I don't know about y'all, but that scares me. Because a nation that refuses to hear from God, the Bible says, cannot expect to be blessed by God. Watch this. Why are you saying this, Reverend? 
Because, friends, you and I as Americans have enjoyed some luxuries for years that we have taken for granted. And I'm here to prophesy that some of those things that we have enjoyed and counted as what? Just something to, that, that we've expected as a luxury. Friends, we are getting closer and closer to where those things are going to be denied. And that's when we're going to find out. That's when we're really going to know. How many of us really mean it when we say, as for me and my house, I don't care what laws they pass. I don't care what customs they follow. I don't care how everybody else is doing it. I don't care what they do. As for me, I'm not going to forget how I got here. I'm not here because of how they vote in Congress. I, I watch this, friends. I'm not in here because of who I'm employed by. I, I, I'm here. I, I, I'm, I'm experiencing the blessings in my life. I am who I am because of God, and I will never turn my back. Oh, God. I, I wish I had somebody in here know what I'm talking about. I'm going down with him, friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch this. Watch this. I don't have, and I hope that you don't have, a plan B when it comes to serving God. Watch this, watch this. I don't care what act they pass. If that, if that act tells me that I can be arrested for hate speech because I'm preaching from this book, then get y'all bond money ready. You, you, you just missed me right there. Watch this, Ronald, because I'm going to jail. As for me. And my house. I don't know what they're going to do at your house. I don't know what you're going to do. And I need you to understand that this is not simply a deathbed confession of, of, of Joshua. See, some people make some claims and make some promises because they know they're on their way out. And they're just trying to get right with God before the last say so. This is not the case here. Joshua is not simply saying this now. He proved it by his life. You remember Joshua was one of the 12 spies. And 10 of them gave a negative report. Joshua didn't care, him and Caleb. They didn't care about what they said. Even back then, when he was around 40 years old, he was literally saying what? I don't care what y'all do. As for me and my house, I know who butters my bread. I wish I had somebody hear me. Watch this early. See, see, some people ain't country like me. I, I got to just say it like I feel it. You don't bite the hand. That's feeding you. You don't look a gift horse in the mouth. You, you just accept what they, watch this, friend. I'm telling you, I, I look like a crazy man, a dog and my wife talking about her. When this is the woman, watch this, Helen. This is the woman that cooks my food who at any time could put a little something in there. I ain't there all the time. She don't always eat when I eat. <laughs> I'm just saying. I know where my bread is buttered. I know who cleans my clothes. I know who thinks about me and buys me little. The other day, she's so she's such a sweet blessing. The other day, man, I'm always getting these uh, QVC boxes in the mail, you know, and, and well, she gets them. And uh, every now and then, here lately. It's a lot of them boxes for me. She said, I'm tired of you. When you do your Zoom, you don't have the right thing. You don't have the right lighting. You don't have nothing to hang your green screen. Oh, I, man, I'm, I, I think I'm professional now. 
She didn't went and bought me all this equipment. Oh, man, I got it. I got cameras. I got lights. I'm, I'm, I'm a Hollywood director. I look like a fool when somebody been that good to me. I look like a fool when somebody been that thoughtful as it relates to me. I look like a fool. I'm trying to get your friends on a high and holier level. We look like fools. When God has been so good to us, when God has done so much for us, when God has even, can I just throw this in, where God has even done some things for us that we don't even know about. God has kept us out of some trouble. God has caused us to go another way because there was something wait for you. And God put a detour. Sometimes you ought to just thank God for the things he delivered you from that you have no knowledge of. Watch this. So he says, as for me and my house, we going to serve the Lord. They say, we, we going to do it too. And then he says, uh-uh, y'all talking too fast. Watch this, friends. Kendrick, like I told you yesterday, oh, Kendrick, he getting ready to get married. Give him a hand. Now say a short prayer for him. <laughs> him and Beosha. Amen. Say, so, so why do you say that? Like I told him yesterday. When people decide to get married, you need to understand the kind of commitment you are making. Because this is the woman and this is the man that you're going to wake up next to from now on. And they got nice teeth now. Head full of hair now. Anybody listening to me? A six pack. Not a gallon like I got. They walk upright, LeSherry. I mean, they walk upright. Got a beautiful smile now. But marriage ain't for three months. Or three, <laughs> watch this, or three years. The vow, I told him yesterday, the vow say, to death do us part in sickness and in health for richer and for poorer and this is not a contract oh help me holy ghost i'm coming at you right here what 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 joshua is saying i'm not asking you to choose to be in a contract with god i'm asking you to renew your covenant because contracts can be broken but covenants are forever there it is so they speak up we can do that. We can do that. And I already told you the end of the story. I, I, went, I know I'm going backwards, but I already told you. They thought they could. After Joshua went off the scene, watch this. Nobody there to remind them anymore. They forgot what they committed to. And that's all I came to tell you, friends. Don't forget how you got here. Remember, as old James Cleveland used to say, if it had not been for the Lord on our side. Another songwriter said he brought us. He taught us. He kept us. He never left us. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't forget how you got here. And once you 
remember that because of some memorials that you've set up in your life. May that cause us when we remember it. May that cause you, may that cause me to want to render even better service to the Lord. Sincere service. Faithful service. Loyal service to the Lord. We just a few weeks now from celebrating. I can't wait because we didn't get to celebrate Easter the, the way we would have wanted to in 2020. We couldn't, we couldn't be in the house of the Lord, but the Lord said the same. In a few weeks, we're going to celebrate Easter, friends. And, and, and that day serves as another opportunity for us to remember how we got here. Every first Sunday when we put out the Lord's table, that serves to remind us how we got here. And that ought to cause us to want to serve the Lord with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our might. Stand with me now. Look how far the Lord has brought us. Look how far the Lord has brought us. Remember this, friends. In Him, we live we move and we have our being. I don't know about you, but if the Lord ain't going, I don't want to go. I want to always be not only in the perfect will of God, but I want to be in the presence of God. Amen. I want to be in the presence of God. As our heads are bowed now, there's one other thing that the book of Joshua teaches. I told you at the beginning that it teaches that God keeps his promises. But from a spiritual standpoint, it teaches that there are a couple of kind of people in the world. There's some who have never, have yet to experience their inheritance because they have not followed their Joshua. You know, Joshua names means Jehovah uh, uh, is salvation. Our Joshua is Jesus. You see, if you don't follow Jesus, you never get to inherit. But then there are people who have followed Jesus, watch this, and they in the land, but they're not enjoying the trip because of unbelief. That's, that's really what the Hebrew writer is talking about in chapter 3. You see, enjoying the trip comes by obedience. You, you cannot enjoy the trip because of disobedience. And I don't know where you fit in there. If you haven't followed Jesus, then you never get to the inheritance. If you're not obeying Jesus, then you can't enjoy the inheritance. So I don't know where you are today. But, but I hope today that you will make a choice. You will decide to put Jesus first in your life. To choose this day to serve the Lord. No matter how dark, how cloudy, how dreary times may get. Follow him in the up times. Follow him in the down times. Choose this day who you are going to serve. One of the things that I find the most frustrating in my life is whenever I have to, I have to deal with people who refuse to make a decision. That's, that's why I, I told you always before, I don't like to ask the question, what are we going to eat today? I don't know what you want. I don't whatever you want. Well, I don't know. Where are we going? I don't know. I just get in the car. But when we get in the car, you need to tell me where we're going. I don't know. What do you feel like? I told just told you. It don't matter. Well, you ever been there? Just 
make a decision. That, that's what Joshua was telling them. I, I, I run the risk of talking to somebody in this audience today or somebody in our virtual audience that you haven't chose Christ yet. And so you think you haven't made a choice. Yes, you have. When you don't choose Christ, you made a choice. I'm asking you to choose Jesus today. Get on the Lord's team. Let the Lord bless you with salvation. Let the Lord forgive you for your sins. Let the Lord come into your heart. If you are saved and you're not a member of a local church, what are you waiting on? Well, I've been visiting. Make a decision. Get in a church. What's the Lord's plan for your life? What does the Lord want you to do? I'm still not clear on that. I've been praying for how many years? Make a decision. Choose this day whom you're going to serve. Father, we thank you for your word today. And I thank you, God, that you made it clear to me. I, I, I don't take credit, nor for anything in my life. I know, God, that I am who I am because of who I am in you. I want to thank you, God, for your grace. I want to thank you for your patience. I want to thank you for your kindness. I want to thank you, God, for your forgiveness toward me because, God, everything I am and have is because you, you are the I in my life. You did it. You did it. You did it. And you continue to do it over and over and over again. And to you and you only shall I give glory. Shall I give praise? Shall I, shall I exalt only you? May that be the heart of every believer. God, all that we are and all that we have, we give to you. We acknowledge you, God, as our source. We say thank you. Lord, anybody that have not come to Christ, we pray that the Holy Spirit would burden them so that they would not be able to rest until they give their heart, until they make a positive choice to come to Christ today. God, even right now, Holy Spirit, touch their heart. Draw them, God, whether they're in their cars, in their homes, on the job. God, we know you can just say the word and they can be saved. Thank you for it now. Thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, all the people of God said, amen.